to God be the glory in Jesus mighty name amen and amen I trust you all have been having a wonderful and a great week at the same time and it is to that that I just want to honor love and appreciate each and every one of you today I just want to get right into it because I believe that you know we've been on this journey together um, because Apostle Paul said something so beautiful and this is what he said in the book of first Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 25 to 26 so now look at what he says he says everyone who competes in the games trains with strict discipline they do it for a crown that is perishable but we do it for a crown that is imperishable therefore I do not run aimlessly I do not fight like I'm beating the air no I discipline my body I'm making my slave so we are not making the body slave no not at all <laughs> because it is free so that after I have preached to others I myself will not be disqualified you know I'm so grateful to the Lord because of the knowledge that is basically manifesting in that from our spirit because we are the spirit of knowledge and for that reason is why the Lord is wanting in his infinite mercy reconciling all things to himself and how is he doing this by dealing with the roots of situations rather than cutting the trees the Bible declares that every plant that my father has not planted I will uproot which means there are some things that have been in existence for a long time yes they have but the truth about it is no one not everybody I'm sure there are some few people that are out there that are exactly doing the same and the truth of it is at the same time is that a lot of us we are not asking the right questions the Bible declares it says you have not because you ask not and when you ask you ask with the wrong motive and how is it a wrong motive because a lot of you you are just concerned we can be concerned with ourselves yes not concerned about you know the future not concerned about the children the children's children it's just I just want to get out of the situation I know my children will grow up they will deal with this situation but I just want to get out of it <laughs> do you see that dimension no not just the, not just you alone the children to get out of it not just them alone but the generations to get out of it do you see why the father is always using the dimension of first Peter chapter 2 and 9 for you are a chosen generation Rebecca what do you have in you you have two nations so the Lord looks at things generationally while we look at things individually that is the reason why generations keep coming back and dealing with the same situation rather than what dealing with the things once and for all because everybody just want to do things and just get out of it and just keep going you know and that is not the way the father works most of the time so it's a place that we have to understand that the Lord is always trying to uproot things yes and that is the reason why he has called you his chosen one so he wants to uproot things through you so that generations to come they will not suffer the same consequences do you see that because for a long time it has been happening and for a long time the Lord has been looking for one to rise up in order to what to finish that off in order to what to bring it to an end so that generations after you will come in freedom this is the plan and the will of the father as we see it consistently in the scriptures God raised Abraham he said you'll be a father of many nations he was starting something new God lifted who Jacob because it was something he was starting new he did it with David he was doing something absolutely new then come our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ who basically finalized all things that all things might be reconciled through him do you see the beauty of it all because the father looked at Abraham saw generations the Lord looked at David saw generations and he looked at Jesus saw generations so how come we have come into that dimension where we're just looking at ourselves and at our family and that's basically it it should not be so yes it shouldn't be so not at all so that is the reason why you can see that the Lord is calling majority of us in this hour that we might deal with situations once and for all and it is to that I want to speak on this familiar spirit and monitoring spirits today and the reason why I want to share that in itself is because a lot of us the Bible declares like we read earlier on 
1 Corinthians 9 and 26. It says, therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. Do you know, sharing this in love, that some of us can be running aimlessly? Yes, because religion in itself is running aimlessly. And the reason why I say religion is running aimlessly is because if you look at religion, whether all other religions, Buddhists and monks and all of those and Christians and all of those things, do you see that religion that sometimes or majority of the time or almost all the time, they just deal with their individual selves? Yes, they deal with their individual selves and the family and not considering generations. That is why God has called the sons because the sons they look at things generationally they look at things yes on the foundation of christ knowing that it's not just about me it's for generations to come first peter 2 9 and it is for that reason why i want to help us to understand that a lot of us you know concerning this familiar spirit and monitoring spirit we have been dealing with it individually we have been trying to cut it down we have been trying we've been trying to run away from it we're trying to break it off we're trying to cancel it we're trying to destroy it we're trying to run away from it but we are not dealing with the roots of it do you see that dimension yes we are not do dealing with the roots of it because the moment you deal with the root of it the very dimension of what that familiar spirit is gone We've read in the book of Acts chapter 16, <laughs> which is the favorite scripture that a lot of people quote all the time, that Apostle Paul, what happened? He came into a town and there was a woman with a familiar spirit. Yes, they were making money of her and began to follow Apostle Paul, declaring to people that this are what? The what? <laughs> the, 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 the very ones who have come to bring the gospel of Christ Jesus, that they are men of God. Yes. She was right. That is exactly what it is. But eventually, what? It was annoying. <laughs> do you see that? It was annoying. And what did Apostle Paul do? He stopped what he was doing. He faced the thing head on, casted that spirit out, and then they ended up in prison. So you can see that sometimes when you're doing the right thing, yes, you know, they might come at you for doing the right thing. They might be against you for doing the right thing. They will call you all manner of names for doing the right thing. But you have to keep going because Apostle Paul dealt with the situation, casted that spirit out. The people who saw that became angry and put Apostle Paul and Silas in prison. So you can begin to understand Yes, that a lot of us, and the reason why I said we can be doing things, yes, ignorantly or aimlessly is because some of us, we are yet to deal with the roots of that monitoring and familiar spirit. The root has not been dealt with. No. So we are speaking. We are breaking. We are casting. We are basically, you know, pleading. We are doing all manner of things, but the root has not been dealt with. That is why this thing keeps coming back up again and again and again and again. So once the root is dealt with, my father says, every tree that has what not been planted will be what? Uprooted. So if it has not been dealt with, it's only going to grow again. So think about it this way. You have a field and you have a loads of grass on it, right? So what do you do with grasses? You cut it. And if you cut it, it looks smooth for a minute. <laughs> it looks okay for a minute until the rain falls. Then the weather, the sun shines on it. Then it grows back again. But how do you get rid of the grass? By removing it from the roots. Do you see that? Because the moment you remove it from the roots, come rain, come sunshine, is not going to grow again because it has been removed <laughs> permanently. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? Yes. So now you begin to understand why the Lord is wanting to point out a majority of us, what the root of this monitoring and familiar spirit, where it is manifesting from in itself. Amen. So from that in itself, he wants to separate you from it so that you can once again, yes, be free from this dimension. Because I've always encouraged majority of us on this channel, for those that have been here, that this is in three dimensions. And I've helped us to understand, according to the Bible, it is in three dimensions. The first dimension, yes, is what you yourself perhaps got into. The second dimension is what the fathers 
The Bible says, it says, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the teeth, the children's teeth, are set on edge. But no longer shall this proverb be quoted in Israel. And God gave the conditions why it will no longer be quoted. So for some people, the reason why it started is not maybe it's not you. Yes, it's probably from the family. So it started either from your father's side or from your mother's side. And the Lord is wanting to separate you from that. The third dimension, it might not be you. Just like, like Apostle Paul, it was not them. It was the territorial spirit. Daniel chapter 10, it says that what? While I was praying, you know, your prayers have been heard, but there came one. Yes, I was fighting the prince of Persia, the territorial spirit. Apostle Paul crossed over and look at the woman came. It was the regional, the spirit in that region. Can you see? Came after Apostle Paul. So that is the reason why the Father in his infinite mercy is wanting to what? Is wanting to bring that to an end completely. And for that reason, this is where I want to basically help us to understand in the book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse what? And verse 31. So it says here, let's start from verse 13. It says, you shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. It says, give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord, your God. Do you see that? It says, give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. So there are two commands in what? Leviticus 19 and 31. It says, give no regard to them. Pay no attention to them whatsoever. It says, and then, and familiar spirits. It says, do not seek after them to be defiled by them. So you can begin to understand that a lot of people, because in times past, maybe it was your father, or maybe it was your mother, or maybe it was a generation, someone down the line, they sought after these things. Now you can see that whole family is defiled because they went to what? They went to seek after mediums and familiar spirit. So the moment they went to seek after them, the whole family was defiled because they opened the door for the family to be defiled. So this is what I said to the majority of us. It could be something you did. Maybe it was a place where you've been believing God, you've been trusting the Lord, but then you came into alignment with a prophet, a pastor, an apostle, a what? A bishop, whatever dimension it is, you know, false prophets, false all of those things. You came into dimensions with them, not understanding that they themselves, they went after mediums. They themselves, they are working with familiar spirits and therefore it defiled you. Do you see why we've been talking about the journey of the sonship and helping to understand the order in which God does something? Yes, because majority of the time, the Lord is wanting you to sit at home, to teach you himself. The anointing in which you have received will teach you what you need to know. You do not need anyone to teach you. So you can see the father calls you away from all of those things so that you can sit with him, so that you're not defiled by what is out there. So it is for that reason you can see why I said sometimes it could be you, sometimes it could be family, sometimes it could be territorially. Do you see that dimension? Because if, I, if Apostle Paul had allowed that in itself to continue, he would have been defiled, so he had to cast it out. Because it was it was happening in the days of Jesus too. Yes, it was in existence, but Jesus was so focused on the Father. That's why the Bible says, it says, I do what I see. So all that Jesus was doing was based on what the Father is doing. So for that reason is why the Lord continues to allow us to what? To walk in fullness of what he has called us to walk in. Because until you deal with the roots of the familiar spirit and the roots of what? Of the monitoring spirit, they will keep coming back. So what you're doing is you're casting it out. Remember the scripture that says that what? When the demon is casted out of a house, what happens? He goes away for a time. Then he comes back with seven more. And the last state of that person is worse than the beginning. So you can see the very dimension of it. Because when he comes back and he finds the house clean, he goes away to bring seven more. 
So what does it mean clean? Yes, it has been swept clean. Everything looks good, but it has not been what? It has not been nurtured. The word of God is not there. The things the father is instructing to do is not there. Can you see? It can bring seven more. So you can see not only that in itself that you're not doing the right thing. You're not basically, you know, worshiping or studying. the word. No, sometimes it could be the fact that the root of it has not been dealt with. <laughs> do you understand that? So when it goes away and then comes back, it's been swept clean. So it's been swept clean. I've casted it out. So he comes back because he doesn't find rest where he's going. So he said, let me return to where I came from. So he returns. Now he begins to look for other avenues. So what route is there that has not been dealt with? Let me come through there once again. And he brings in several more. And the word, that state of that person is worse than they were at the beginning. So you can see why the father is wanting to uproot so that there is no more doors for that to be able to come through and you're able to deal with it once and for all. Amen. So I want to share, you know, some of these dimensions because according to my own journey, just for some of you to help to understand that in itself, because the Bible says, give no regard to mediums and familiar spirit. Do not seek after them or to be defiled by them. So I want to help us to understand in my own journey. Yes, I'm going to share this to the glory of God. So on my own journey, it was not a place that I was seeking. No, not at all. I was not seeking for it. I was not basically being familiar with anything. No, not at all. But I remember when I was young, there was this person that I met. You know, she was a nice person. And one day I decided to, you know, we, we, we both went to their house just to basically see how she's doing and things like that. And upon going to that house, what happened? Eventually left there, you know, and then went back home just innocently going there coming back. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? Many years later, when I began to ask the Lord, what is the reason why I'm going through some of the things I'm going through? He began to explain. He said, remember that person's house that you went to? I said, yes, I remember that very well. He said, there is something about that house. And immediately you entered into that house. What happened? He says that what? You came into agreement with family spirit and mediums, monitoring spirit. Basically, that's what the Lord basically called it. He said, you came into agreement with monitoring spirit just by stepping into that house. Do you see that dimension? So you can understand that it is not everybody's house you can visit. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? Because for some people, you don't know what is hidden in that house. Some people, they have altars in their houses. Some people, they have all these charms in their houses. Some people, they have all of these things embedded in the house, either by their parents or by their grandparents. You know, And sometimes some people, they will give their children something and they say, hey, make sure this thing is always with you. Make sure it never departs from you. It has always been in our family for a long time. You know, make sure you keep it safe. Make sure it never leaves. You can see all of those traditional and cultural things that people hand over to their children. So you can see the dimension of it. So by going into that house, defilement happened. So this is why the father always makes you know encourages you be sure before you go to a place inquire of him father am I allowed to go here am I allowed to go there am I allowed to go here because in asking that he's able to what shield and protect you no don't go there you might not understand it now but he will explain to you later and this is where I have shared with majority of us in times past that some of us, we have entered into houses that were shrines. Did you know that? Because you went to visit that person. You went to visit them innocently, but you didn't understand that their house is actually a shrine because you don't know what they have in their basement. You don't know what they have in their what? In their rooftops. So you can see by going into such houses, you became defiled. Oh, he's my boyfriend. He's my girlfriend. I want to go and visit my boyfriend. I want to go and visit my girlfriend. But do you know what their family is all about? Do you know what the generation is all about? Do you know what they themselves are all about? Do you know what that person you're dating is all about? You don't know the root of it, but you went into it and then you became defiled. So you can see you did not go seeking for them, but just by going inside of the place, you became defiled. That's why it says, do not seek after them. 
So do not seek after them does not necessarily alone mean don't go looking for one. Don't just don't go near where the one <laughs> there is one in existence. You know, the that's why the Lord sometimes can shield you from people. But for sometimes like where well, yeah, well, nothing can happen to me. I, I am I am the body of Christ. He is protecting me. He who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'm gonna go there, nothing is gonna happen. <laughs> ah, God cannot be mocked, huh? They, like I keep saying, there are jurisdictions in the realm of the spirit. The moment you step outside of your jurisdiction, that's basically it. So you did not inquire of the Lord. You went in there. And now look at what happened. Look at how they begun to follow. They've attached themselves to your clothes. They've attached themselves to your shoes. They've attached themselves to your bags. They've attached themselves to you. And therefore, look at it, monitoring. <laughs> Can you see that? And it's always in the same place. I've shared with majority of the people as well that you cannot collect gifts from everybody. And it is not everybody you can give gifts to. And the reason why I said you cannot collect gifts from everybody, neither can you share gifts with everybody, is because sometimes some of these gifts, yes, they have assignments on them. So this is why you begin to understand just like with Apostle Paul, you can see how the girl began to follow them. This is how monitoring spirits and familiar spirits, this is how they operate. So the moment you basically come in, a, in a, uh, uh, come in alignment with one, they want to be your friend. They want to be around you. They want to be friends with you. Some of them want to date you. Some of them want to always have to be in your presence because they want to know exactly what it is you're doing. Familiar spirit, they basically work by information. They want to know everything about you. Have you had a friend who wants to know everything about you? What did you eat last night? Oh, is that what you ate? Well, where did you go You know, yesterday? I tried to call you and you said, oh, I was busy. Hey, yeah, wait, I know you were busy, but what were you doing? <laughs> what was that you were really doing yesterday? Well, I, I was just busy. No, I know you were busy, but what were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Do you see that dimension? They always want to be in that space. Do you see that in itself? And the Father is helping you to understand that these are the operations because you know why? They always want to familiarize themselves with you. Some of them, they want to be exactly who you are, familiar. Some of them, they want to know everything you're doing, you're eating, what you're wearing. Oh, you bought that shirt? Oh, I like that shirt. The next minute, they go and buy the same thing. Oh, I love that shoe. Oh, wow, that's an amazing shoe. They go and buy the same thing. It's all familiar and monitoring spirit. For some people, they will give you gifts. But the root of those gifts, where is it from? This is where you begin to understand. That gift, something has probably been worked on it. And the moment you take it, they begin to monitor everything that is all around you. The Bible says, we are not ignorant of the devices. Those gifts, they are a device. The money, it is a device. Whatever it is that you're being given, that the Lord has told you, don't accept, it is a device. Because I've been around quite a few people. When you tell, you know, when they basically receive gifts from people and the Lord is like, I need you to give that gift away. Do you know what they say majority of the time? Oh, when if, if anybody gives me gifts and I pray on it, you know, nothing can happen to me. Do not be mocked. Yes, God cannot be mocked. That's the right, that's the right statement. God cannot be mocked. He cannot be mocked. When God says, do not seek after them or to be defiled by them, the gifts can defile you. <laughs> do you see that? The money they gave you can defile you. The clothing they give you can defile you. Yes, the words they give you can defile you. Whatever it is they are speaking or they are saying or they are giving can defile you. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. Some of you, you might be on the YouTube channel, on this person's page, on that person's page. The moment you came in agreement with that, you can be defiled by them. Do you see that dimension? That is exactly in the very dimension in which I'm speaking. And this is why the Father is helping you to understand that for some of you, there is a root to these things. Some of you, there are things in your house that people gave you. Some of you, there are some words that people gave you. For some of you, yes, there are places you have been that you came in agreement with all of these things. I shared mine. 
and is helping you to understand it. So you can begin to see why the Lord is helping to save us from that deep dimension because of this defilement. He wants to restore. Yes, he wants to what? He wants to restore. Amen? Now, I want us to look at Isaiah chapter 8. Here is another dimension in Isaiah chapter 8. It says here in verse 18, it says, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord had given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel. From the Lord of hosts, we dwelleth in Mount Zion. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirit, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Should not a people seek unto their God for the living, to the dead? To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Do you see that dimension? So the Father is helping us to understand. He says, do not seek. Yes? And when they say unto you, seek them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep. Can you see? It says wizards that peep. Wizards that peep. Monitoring spirits. Wizards that peep and mutter. Can you see? They peep. They look at what it is that you're doing and they give information. Can you see that? They peep and they mutter. So you can begin to understand the beauty of what the Father is instructing because he's trying to save majority of us from what this is truly in order that we might come into what into what the father has ordained can you see so they mutter they say things they say things barely audible it's barely audible you know it's always in dissatisfaction they say something in the low so you can see how they communicate you know they won't communicate with you for you to hear they communicate with one another so that is why you begin to understand how did this person know something about me how how is it <laughs> Because sometimes you can be in the presence of somebody and they give you a prophetic word like, yep, yeah, that is absolutely the Father and you feel peace. And then sometimes somebody gives you a word and like, no, 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 I don't agree with that. You know, because you know why? The Father is encouraging in this hour because this is how they communicate with one another. I'm not talking about some people who say some things and get it wrong, you know, because there's sometimes you can say something and like, hey, you know, Father, I wasn't sure. I basically spoke too early on that. That's different. But I'm talking about how they communicate. Because for this dimension, I was explaining to us a while back that this is like a mobile network. Everybody plugs into it and they begin to communicate with one another concerning it. So they find one who is the son of light. They try to find a way in and they begin to communicate. This one is the son of light. This one, this is all about him. This one, this is it. This one, that is it. That is why some of them, they go to what? Wizards. They go to witch doctors and all of these things to, ver to verify who you are, to get prophetic words concerning who you are because somebody opened the door concerning this right from the very beginning. Do you see that dimension? Amen? <laughs> to God be the glory. So that basically helps to bring us into a, into a dimension of where I said that for some of us, it is not what we've done. It is what our parents did. Because sometimes our grandfather, great-grandmother, before they met Christ, this was their tradition. This was what they were into. You know, they were into all of these occultic practices. They were into all of these things. And because of that dimension in itself, where they gave themselves over to these things, and then eventually, to God be the glory, they became born again. The doors of these things, just because they became born again, has not yet been closed. <laughs> do you see that because a lot of people think that the moment i become born again all of those things stop no not at all it doesn't automatically stop do you see that dimension it doesn't automatically stop no it has to be reconciled because you were reconciled when you became when you were in the world the father reconciled you to himself. That's why you became born again. So if he has reconciled you to himself, he has to reconcile those things that were sown outside of him and reconcile it back to himself. Amen? Because if he doesn't reconcile it, it is an open door for what? For familiar spirit and monitoring spirit. Oh, that person? Yeah, they did that. You know, about two years ago, I, have they have they have they reconciled it yet? No. So hey, have they have they repented of it? No, they haven't. Have they have they basically reconciled the inheritance concerning it? No, they haven't. Now you can see 
This is how they begin to come in. This is how they begin to come in. That is why you can see why Apostle Paul told us categorically that what? He came to reconcile all things to himself. This is the reason why he came. So he first reconciled you, the most important part. Then he's now reconciling everything about you. So you can see. Now look at it. Let's look at the case of uh, the prodigal son who basically had all the wealth in the world. He had all the wealth. He went, he asked for his inheritance. He went away, he blew it all off. Now what happened? He was rich. He became poor. <laughs> now he thought to himself, if I can only go back to my father's house, at least my father's servants, they eat more than what I'm eating right this minute. He went back to his father's house. And what happened? Coat was being put on him. Calf was being slaughtered for him. He was reconciled. Do you see that dimension? He was what? He was reconciled. So the most important thing was what the father said. You were dead and now you are alive. That is the most important thing. And this is what Jesus said to us when he went on the cross. You were dead in your trespasses and now in me you are alive. So it's not about those things yet. It's the, it's the fact that you made it. Yeah, you made it. Don't, don't worry about it. the rest. We'll basically sort that out later. But you made it into me. That is the most important part. So now that you're walking in me, with Jesus walking with you, now let's begin to go and reconcile those things. So yeah, you went to Egypt last year. You misplaced a coin over there. Let's go. Let's go to Egypt. Let's go and reconcile that coin. Let's reconcile it. And you bring it back to Christ. You went to Angola the year before. You know, you misplaced some things there. Let's go back to Angola. Let's bring it back into Christ. So you can see that with Christ, is now able to journey with you to restore all of these things. Just in the same way. Can you see? Otherwise, the spirit of Egypt is there is there because while you are in Christ, what you basically misplaced in Angola, they are using familiar spirit and monetary spirit to familiarize with you, to do all of those things to you. Now, while you went to Angola, what you misplaced there before you came into Christ, somebody is using that to lay accusations against you. So you can see, you can quote all the scriptures, you can basically pray all the prayers, but until that thing is reconciled, the familiar spirit, the monitoring spirit will continue to use those things as an entry point into the life of the person so you can see why the father is always intentional about reconciliation so like i was saying earlier on for some of you is what your father where he was in times past is the mother where she was in times past is the grandfather where they were in times past and like i said for some of them they perhaps went into relationships yes while they were growing up with people who had this spirit and yes the agreement was perhaps sex you know they had sex with the person and eventually can you see that in itself that basically allowed that to come in to defile because the moment you laid with that person can you see why i said sex is an agreement sex is a contract because the moment you lay with that person or you laid with that person you came into agreement and a contract for those familiar spirit to come against you so like i said that's why i said you know sometimes it's your dimension sometimes it's what the parents they did so the father or the mother, maybe you, you're a virgin. You've never basically been in sexual immorality before, but you're experiencing family spirit and monetary spirit. Yeah, the father, the grandfather, who they slept with, whether they slept with a witch or a sorcerer, or they slept with somebody who was full on with family and monetary spirit. And by sleeping with them, they came into agreement, a contract was signed, and eventually come into defile, completely the children and the grandchildren. Do you see that dimension? It says, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? Do you see that dimension? They were seeking the dead <laughs> to receive words. We've seen this in the Bible. With who? With apostle. Sorry, no apostle. <laughs> with Saul. Remember Saul? He was trying to get a prophetic word. Where did he go? When the Lord departed from him, he went to a witch this is that dimension he went to a witch he went to a witch to consult yes on behalf of the living this is when someone tells you to consult mediums and spirits who whisper and mutter should not a people inquire of their god why consult the dead on behalf of the living can you see that apostle paul uh, sorry saul could not win the battle and he was trying to get a prophetic word 
and he went to a dead person to get a prophetic word and this is what is happening in this hour that is why i said in a, in the book of first john chapter 4 you have to test every spirit because majority of the people out there that are opening youtube channels instagram facebook you don't know where they are consulting what it is they are consulting from they come they give it to you and you're there thank goodness that is a confirmation that is the word of the lord yeah I, I, that that basically resonated with me but where did that come from this brings me to the third dimension the territorial dimension yep yeah, the territorial spirit prince of persia i remember there was a time you know there was a sanctuary that i was in you know uh i believe when i first uh finished university i moved uh, you know uh came out of uh came out of that moved back home and if there was a place where i went to there was a sanctuary i went to which i believe you know originated from ghana thereabout and i basically i believe i've shared that testimony here where i said that that sanctuary is rooted in what in marine kingdom in itself so it was a place where i went there and I remember there was a time while I was there, you know, they had this gathering and get together. And, you know, <laughs> you know, I used to, I basically I've shared that before that I used to DJ a while back. And while they were basically, you know, having all that they were having, I went and agreed. I said, yeah, you know, I used to DJ. I've got my equipment. I'll come and DJ for you all. You know, it's okay. I'll come and DJ while, while we have a little get together because they were having a fundraising. God knows what they were having. I can't remember what it was precisely. So they were having whatever it is. I said, I will go and DJ for them, you know, and basically play gospel music, you know, to the point I gave them a microphone and things like that. You know, I left some equipments there. So it was a place where the Lord now began to help to understand in that dimension. He said, do you know where you went to? I said, yes, Lord. He said, do you know they had been watching you before you went there? And I'm like, really? Yeah, they had been watching. And I'm like, how were they watching? You know, and the father began to help to understand familiar spirit and monitoring spirit. They had been watching even before you went and joined them. And I began to wonder, how were they able to watch in all of those things? The dimension of the Prince of Persia, the territorial <laughs> spirits. Do you see that dimension, the territorial spirit? So what happened? Because of the work that I walked in there, that was the reason why the accusations, the monitoring spirit, the familiar spirit was manifesting from that in itself. Do you see that? So the father began to show a root of it. He's saying that sanctuary, yeah, that sanctuary was not of me. You went in there and this is where all of it began. So everything you do, they monitor, they monitor and they familiarize. So majority of the prophetic word, because I remember when the Lord basically spoke concerning them and this was the scripture that he gave. And this is the dimension for majority of you. And the Lord has been helping you to understand the reason why he has been calling you out of that place in which you're working out of the place in which you're worshiping because for some people not that the place is bad no not at all but for some people that place is actually demonic in nature that is why it says now look at what the bible says when the father gave me this he gave me ezekiel 13 it says your prophets Israel are like jackals among ruins. You have not gone up to, to the breaches in the wall to repair it for the people of Israel so that it will stand firm in the battle in the battle on the day of the Lord. It says their visions are false and their divinations a lie. Even though the Lord has not sent them, they say the Lord declares and expect him to fulfill their words. Have you not seen false visions and uttered lying divinations when you said the Lord declares, though I have not spoken? Then Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Because of your false words and lying visions, I am against you, declares the sovereign Lord. My hand will be against the prophets who see false visions and utter lying divinations. They do not belong to the council of my people or be listed in the records of Israel, nor will they enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the sovereign Lord. So you can see what the father was declaring about these people. He said they did not belong. They do not belong to the council. No, 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 no. Are, not, are they listed in the records of Israel? Which means the father was saying they are not part of me. They did not come from me. I did not send them. Even though they are saying the Lord declares, it is not me that they are calling. So you can begin to understand. So the father now began to help to understand that whatever it was they were speaking was out of divination, was out of what? was out of false 
hood. It was all monitoring and familiar spirit. This is why I said majority of these people, they will come. They want to align themselves with you. They will come. They want to be your friend. They will come because they see the light in you. Do you see why? I always encourage the prophets and help them to understand prophets. Listen to the word of the Lord. Yes, listen to the word of the Lord, because the moment the Lord calls you into the office of the prophetic, the first thing that is always bound to happen is you can have witches around you. You can have sorcerers around you. You can have all of these Jezebels around you. Why? Because they're trying to get the prophet to walk in the way with them, just like Balaam was being called to for Balak. Can you see that dimension to walk with them? So you can begin to understand it takes the grace of the Lord to keep you standing. That is why the father is wanting to break the powers of this monitoring and familiar spirit by showing you the root of where it all started from because it did not begin in you because you belong to the father somebody began this thing was it you yourself and the places you went to was it your family you know what they basically engaged in or was it at the end of the day the community where you are in could it be that that community they operate in familiar monitoring spirit yes there are some places that people will move to that in that community it's all about familiar and monitoring spirit that's all they do that's how they get the information about you they don't need to come into your house. They just need to give you a gift and they're monitoring you. Do you see that dimension? I basically shared about a testimony about where I was before, where I went to this person's house. I went to teach them when I was not supposed to teach them. I went there. I forgot a book there. And the wife of the man stole the book and then eventually using that book for mind control. Do you see that dimension? so that they would get me on their side. But the Lord broke me off. So for majority of you, this is why the Father has been given this word according to Leviticus 19 and verse 31. It says, go give no regard. Some of us are giving regards to them. Some of us are giving regards to familiar spirit. Though we might not be seeking after them, but because of what they are giving you, you can be defiled by them. Because of the money. Oh, I just want to bless you with this money. And you are there. Maybe you've been believing God, maybe for $500. Yes. And the Lord is like, you see, somebody is going to come and try to give you that money you've been expecting. Because sometimes, some of you, <laughs> you might be believing God. I want this thing, Father. I want this thing. I've, I've been believing you for this thing. And you begin to mention what it is that you're believing God for. And somebody will be like, wow, this person is desperate for this thing. Let me buy it for them. They buy it and they bring it to you. Ah. Thank you so very much. Uh, this is what I've been believing God for. This is what I've been trusting God for. You did not ask the Lord if it's something you should receive. You did not ask the Lord if it's something you should take from them. But you received it believing because you prayed for it. They basically gave it to you. And then you collected it. And now look at the warfare that has broken out concerning. You became defiled. Hence the reason for the warfare. Some of you is the relationship. You became defiled by the relationship. Stay away from that brother. Stay away from that sister. Stay away from that man. Stay away from that family. Stay away from those people. But you continued. You became defiled by them because you don't understand that you don't see what God sees. He sees the root of it. You are only seeing the trees. <laughs> Can I repeat that? God is seeing the roots, but you are only seeing the trees. And the Father is trying to save you because of the roots, but you are trying to hold on to the tree. Ha! Ah, to God be the glory. <laughs> Amen. So that's why the Father is always encouraging majority of you and helping you to understand, hey, stay away from this person. Stay away from that person. Stay away from this place. Stay away from that house. Stay away from that YouTube channel. Stay away from this. Stay away from that. Stay away from this. Stay away from that. There is always a reason why the Father, because it tells you to stay away. That is why he says he uses the foolish things to confound the wise. Because you might not understand it now, but the time is coming when the Lord will reveal it to you very clearly why he told you to stay away. Because majority of the time, he might not tell you straight away because he wants you to walk by, by faith. And do you see the beauty of it? He wants you to walk by faith. He wants you to what? To walk by faith. So this is the dimension of the will of God concerning your life. 
And this is why the Lord is always intentional and saying, hey, that's why I'm asking you, don't respond. Don't give it to that person. Don't go there. Stay away from there. Because sometimes you can be in a place. Yes, <laughs> you can be in a place and you're there. And sometimes you can like, what is happening here? Father, help me to understand it. And when you don't know how to respond to it, you can easily fall into it. I believe I've shared a testimony here before. There was someone I was with and we went to we went to a place uh, there together. I believe it was their family and things like that. And as soon as I entered into that house, you know, they basically told us we could stay over the, to the following day. We stay there. And as soon as I stayed in that house in itself, you know, it was all manners of immorality that was trying to manifest. <laughs> you see that dimension? And I was trying to ask the Lord, what is the reason why this desire was trying to manifest? Because it's not my desire. Desire. I have no desire for this at all. And the Lord was saying, it's because of the people who slept in that bed. Yes. <laughs> Can you see that? So it was the grace of the father that helped me to overcome that in itself. So you can see because of that, the familiar spirit, the monitoring spirit, the familiar spirit and the monitoring spirit. This is why I said it is not every house you can go to. It is not every house you can enter into. It's not every invitation to places you can accept. Why? Because if you do so, you can come into agreement with the familiar and what? And the monitoring spirit. Because just like with Apostle Paul, it was following. So you can see because your father did it or your grandfather did it, it had been following them. Now they've gone to sleep. Now the father it's latched onto the father. The father has gone to sleep. It's latched onto the children. Until the child now decides to wake up and what? Rise in his sonship and then deal with that situation once and for all. Yes, eventually it is broken off and no longer has a root with that family. So from that generation onwards, that family spirit no longer has a legal access. You have to understand all of these things, they work by legalities. Do you see why the woman in Luke chapter 18, why she said, grant me justice from my adversary? They work with legalities because you have to also get it in the book of Micah chapter 2. It says they stay up all night and they were searching for iniquities. So you can see it is legalities majority. So of them are looking for. That is why it says when they are cast out of the house, they go away looking for a place of rest. And when they do not, they come back and see that the house has been swept clean. And they what? They go right in. So before they can go right in, they are looking for legalities. What are the legal roots into this place? Just like if you want to go into a new nation, right? You go there as a visitor, first of all, right? So you go there as a visitor, you look at the land. <laughs> can you see that dimension? You look at the land, you see See how it is in itself the land is good you go back now i want to move to that land now for you to move to that nation you have to look at the legal roots what kind of visa am i going to be able to use to be able to apply and live here what kind of stay or resident permit would i need to be able to legalize myself just in the same way it is in the spirit realm what are the legalities was it what this person did or was it what they themselves what they did do you see that because that is what usually happens. They're looking for legalities. And it is with those legalities that they come and then they begin to what? To manifest what they need to manifest. And you are there. You're cutting, you're breaking, you're binding, you're doing all of those things. And the father is saying, this is not a matter of prayer. This is for you to come into the court and deal with the accusations. So you come to the court to deal with the legality of the situation. So it is a place. What happens? Father, I am here. This is happening. What is the root and the very foundation of why this thing is manifesting? And the Lord gives you a folder in the courts and says, this is the accusation that is released against you. I remember there was a time when I was trying to write my book, you know, a, a journal that I was writing a while back. You know, the Lord said to write a devotional, which I obediently did. And upon writing the devotional, it was like I was struggling to write it. And I'm like, Lord, help me to understand why I am not able to write these things. Help me to understand it. And he said, remember there was a sanctuary you went to? Yes. And they gave you a book. Yes, Lord. I remember that very clearly. He said, that book, they were using it for mind control. I said, yes, I, I understand that when I was reading that. That was what was happening. And he said, well, I told you to take that book to this man's house. I said, yes, it's true. You told me to, but I couldn't take it. So I put it in a recycle bin. He said, you shouldn't have done that <laughs> because now they can use that as a legality against you. 
<laughs> do you see because i remember and going for a conference where the man was releasing curses upon people who basically do that with his books so now the father had to go say go back and sow a seed of love right there <laughs> do you see that to break off from that in itself and when i did that do you know what happened i was able to write the book <laughs> do you see that dimension so even though they are walking in witchcraft there is a law in the spirit because you the bible declares in romans 8 and 2 it says the law of the spirit of life the law of this it says with christ the law of the spirit of life it's at work in you it gives life yes and it helps you to understand also the law of sin and death there is a law of sin and death and there is a law of the spirit of life jesus is above every other law do you see that dimension jesus is above is the perfect law of liberty so does that mean we basically discard the law no the law is absolutely it says it's fulfilled in christ jesus it says because through christ jesus the law of the spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death so when you violate the law yes it can basically bring sin and death so that is why basically coming into agreement with the law of the spirit of life, which is Christ Jesus, it sets you off away, it sets you apart from this familiar and monitoring spirit. Because the Lord wants to show majority of you the root of this familiar spirit. Could it be a relationship that you're in? Could, could it be something that was given to you? Could it be, yes, could it be a marriage that you entered into? Could it be, could it be, could it be? He wants you to he wants to show you what. It could be <laughs> amen so that is the reason why he's what he's releasing this to you in this hour because he wants to show you that so that every defilement that has come against you can eventually be removed because the Bible says it says give no regard to mediums and family spirit do not seek after them to be defiled by them do you see that dimension because sometimes they can move you in a dimension that is not of the will of the Father. Yes, they can. They can move you in that dimension. But the Father is here. He says, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen? And he wants to set you free. So I hope that this has brought an encouragement to you. Because he wants to show you three dimensions. Is it what you did? What the parents did? Or is it where you're at? Because sometimes it could be where you're at, what your parents did, or what you yourself came into agreement with without your knowledge. That's why the Bible says we are not ignorant and you are not ignorant in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So by the authority of the living word, I release the justice of the Lord right into the very roots of the familiar and monitoring spirit. I release the justice of the Lord. It says righteousness and justice is the foundation of the throne of God. And I release that justice that the truth will prevail to set you free from the very history of this which has come against you that he whom the son sets free you are free indeed no longer shall this be your portion because why he says the light has come the light has come and the glory of the lord is being revealed in through with and for you that you might walk with absolute clarity pure and blameless before the father and you are well you are whole so from this moment every monitoring every familiar spirit muttering against you i release the justice of the lord concerning it in the mighty name of jesus and i release angels to begin to remove this from your presence as you begin to deal with the roots in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I bless you with mercy and I bless you with life in Jesus' mighty name. You all are the blessedness of the one who called you right from the very beginning. I love you all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you.